Hi, Hendrik. Hi, Kasimir. You have been writing a blog post about how to automate Gregor's hen house. Could you explain what your solution is like? Uh, I actually propose two solutions. One using uh, 230 volts and the industrial components. And the other one is uh, I mean, more of a do-it-yourself solution using one of these. This is a Raspberry Pi, but my original proposal was an Arduino. Uh, but Krieger told me he had one of these lying around so we could use it. In addition to this, we need sensors and some relays. Sensors for measuring temperature in the henhouse and uh, also relays to control the heating and the lights. Yeah. So you need a computer? Yeah, and this, this is, is the computer. Yeah, and you need uh, some sensors? Yes. And you need some relays? Yes, and uh, in this case to make it a real IoT, we should probably add a Wi-Fi as well. Yeah. Just to make it a bit more fun to play with. Greg has asked some questions. And one of those is this solution. What happens when the power fails? When the power fails, the, you don't have any electricity. It has to recover gracefully and restart once power is back up. And uh, the, the problems that can happen is that you have a corrupted memory or something like that. And this solution is quite uh, limited into what it can do. Uh, what about the legal requirements and sec security requirements that he has on his handouts? Not only the functional requirements. How can we meet them to assure that we don't get too warm in the hen house, not too cold, and also that no one will hack into the hen house? Yeah, that's a tricky question. Uh, and uh, well, temperature, uh, having one uh, sensor for temperature is probably good enough in most cases, but uh, to be uh, to secure it, we should have a secondary uh, that could cut the power if it gets too warm. For the security, in, uh, in hacking, there should be a proper firewall installed uh, in the internet connection, and that should be in the uh, incoming connection. This is a lot of stuff, and from an electrical perspective, how do you assure that it can withstand the temperature and the humidity within a hen house? Uh, my suggestion is that we, we we put it on the outside of the hen house, so mm. we have a, a sealed box. Uh, that can withstand uh, high pressure water and uh, dust uh, and it's uh, I would say an IP67 classification which means you can put it down into water for about 30 minutes and it should withstand that without leaking. Mm. Uh, that would be the expensive part of the project. Yeah. Uh, he's a little bit worried that your solution will be too costly. He said that it will cost more than his hen house. Probably. So, uh, um, is, is this a common problem with IoT today, that it's too expensive to use? And that is the case why you seldom use IoT at home? Uh, yes, I would say. The savings that you make in uh, reducing energy, that's a small cost compared to the cost of investing in IoT. But uh, on the other hand, we all have to save energy. What is the cost of this solution, roughly? I would say about 400 euros. Yeah. Maybe 500 if we go for a really expensive casing, but yeah. um, so this uh, is a, this is much more than he paid for his hen house. Yeah, the eggs will be quite expensive, yeah. but uh, it will be a greener hen house, yeah. and uh, the hens might have a better, more consistent environment. Then we will uh, see what Gregor has to say about this. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. See if he starts implementing it and yeah. tries it out. Yeah.